<clears throat> so yeah, anyways, welcome back guys. Uh, we're playing more Sherlock Holmes uh, Crimes and Punishments and this time we're dealing with case Holmes, poor little Wiggins needs a where we need to help uh, to that Wiggins boy uh, who actually invited us to the, 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 to the dinner but his brother apparently was accused for something which he didn't do and he got beaten in the prison so now we need to go and explore that and we will do that but first let's see a letter from our previous case dear mr holmes i'm writing to you in, in admiration of your dedu deductive talents uh, you quite brilliantly uncovered the truth behind the terrible murder that took place here at Kew Gardens i cannot believe that it was mr hamish it is so terrible to release we were working with the murderer nevertheless despite how sinister this place has become we are managing together with albert and i am now able to continue my studies thank you so much for your remarkable work your sincerely margaret white <clears throat> that was the girl which actually worked uh, at that garden and <clears throat> sadly but she doesn't even know that Albert was part of that murder case, murder thingy, so <clears throat> I guess it's better that way. So I would assume that this is probably the final case. Not sure about that, but I'm gonna think like that because there are no more slots for uncovering new character portraits. So this might be the one of one of the final cases. Anyhow, locked. I don't even know where the hell are we locked. now. Apparently, we can't go that way. <clears throat> Can we go here? No, we can't. Locked. This one is locked as well, so this way got to be. Oh, yeah, there we go. Uh, please, gentlemen, leave the scene now. Oh, Mr. Holmes, is that you? Uh, good evening, uh, Constable... Constable Marrow. I was here with Inspector Abiline during the Ripper case, Mr. Holmes, back in 88. But then this is nothing like that case. With this one, we've got the murderer, the weapon and the statements which speak for themselves. Of course, Marrow. But you know that appearances can sometimes be deceiving. Before we do that, I'm going to turn off my Steam account. Because uh, messages, messages right now. So let's see. Who were the victims? <clears throat> the two men here, both shot. The stat fellow was Brian Vercotti, a well-known ruffian. The other, Kenneth Butler. A jeweler by trade. Uh, you spoke of statements. You have witnesses? Well, I was there, so I gave my own statement. And then there were two other witnesses who said they saw the killer Chapman. Mr. Turner, a gentleman who lives in that flat over there. And Polly Powell, a flower seller who was over at the far side of the street. Hmm. So, Constable Marrow, I should be delighted to hear your testimony. I was standing at the north side of Half Moon Street. That was the side that you came from. But you would have been unable to observe this part of the street, where we are standing now. That is correct. But I saw the two victims slowly enter Half Moon Street, and then shortly after, the fireworks started. A few minutes after that, the fellow Chapman rushed towards me and ran into Half Moon Street. Mm, please continue. I didn't pay attention, but suddenly I heard a woman's cries and police whistles on the other side of Half Moon Street. I rushed over there and I saw the two dead bodies on the ground. When I reached Whitechapel Street, I saw Leighton Chapman. He'd been caught by two police constables. Which doesn't prove anything. Did you hear the shots? I didn't hear any shots. The fireworks were all over the sky. They were so loud, I couldn't hear anything else. So, that was basically a planned murder. What were the fireworks in honor of, uh, Constable? Well, uh, today is Queen Victoria's birthday, Mr. Holmes. 
Ah, yes, I appear to have lost track of the days. It is May now, of course. A Constable Marrow, what else caught your attention while you were running through Half Moon Street? I saw nothing but rats, and I took the time to light every corner with my lamp. Did you happen to look up at Mr. Turner's window when you were on Half Moon Street at that time? Yes, I saw that the window was open, but no one was there. It was dark in the room. Constable, your statements have been of great value to me. Well, I wouldn't say so, but whatever, I guess. A fairly long pole with a forked end. Okay, object of the interest. God damn it, the halos. By the way, I'm still kind of sick, so I'm gonna try my best here. <clears throat> Let's see, first body. A tattoo from Westgate Prison. Vicotti must have done some time there. Hmm. He tried to stop the bleeding with his hand. Death was not instant. Okay. The bullet penetrated his stomach, a dreadful wound. <clears throat> Brian Vercotti suffered greatly. What a terrible way to die. Well, pretty much the same any other way which was done by a pistol, I guess. Okay, let's see. In this one, we are going to, need to use vision. Stuck object, piece of wood. A piece of wood that has stuck between the cobblestones. Let us take a closer look. Hmm. This shard of wood is quite new. Well, I'm amazed how he, no how he can actually recognize all those facts. The bullet struck his head. This man didn't stand a chance. This is an ordinary key. I wonder what kind of door it opens. Actually, okay, that was... That was everything actually from this body. I think that we can use that object of interest. A fairly long pole. A fair... Oh, come on, we have a piece of wood. It got to be from this one. A fairly long pole with a forked end. Hmm. It got to be from that place. Okay, that's uh, one. I'll do anything to save my brother, Mr. Holmes. They run through this place, I guess, so... Just, want, just making sure that we can go actually here. No, we can't. Locked. We can't go inside neither. Let's make sure that we don't miss anything. With vision, neither with vision. Hmm. This mirror is turned towards Half Moon Street. <clears throat> Yeah, so if she lying about something that she didn't saw or she was convinced, I guess we can use that against her. We use vision here perhaps, or murder case, murder place, we can't. Okay, let's interrogate this one, I guess. Good evening, Mr. Turner. Oh, I, I heard Constable Marrow reply to you as Mr. Holmes. Are you that detective, gentlemen? I've heard of you. Uh, and well, I know things. Things about this evening. Excellent. Might we hear your story? <clears throat> first thing first, let's observe the person. Mm. Weirdly, but nothing in his eyes. <laughs> War veteran. Okay. So, he sh shouldn't be lying, I guess. 
for life and limping. Could you tell us everything that you may have seen or heard? Uh, I was already in bed when the fireworks started. A few moments after, I clearly heard two gunshots from outside. Please continue. I, I quickly got up and I grabbed a lamp from my nightstand and I rushed towards the window. I looked down and I saw two bodies. And there was a man with a gun who was standing nearby. Where exactly? Well, oh, near this body. Did he notice you? I don't think so. He rushed towards Whitechapel Street without looking around. Hmm. Mr. Turner, did you see anyone else in the street? No, I saw no one but that man, the murderer, the fellow they caught. Wait, if you go... Ah, okay, we can't do that again. I thought... Or we can. Perhaps I missed something. I'm never going till the end. Olympic. But yeah, we can't find anything else. Okay, I guess we're fine with that one then. <clears throat> Were the two shots you heard consecutive? Yes, th there was a very short pause between them, and, and, and they sounded different somehow. It seemed to me that the second shot was louder than the first. That is an interesting comment. Mr. Turner, what were your actions after you stepped up to the window? I was afraid that the man with a gun might return. So I stayed close to the window till I saw the policeman coming in the half moon from Whitechapel. Then I walked out to tell them everything I saw. You have helped us a great deal, Mr. Turner. Okay. So, uh, different shots and... Wait, what? Turner's view and dark window, perhaps? Mr. Turner stated that he remained at the window of his flat until the police arrived. However, this is the conflict with Maro's statement as the constable did not see anyone at the window. Hmm. That's kinda weird. Uh, investigate the crime scene, interrogate Langton and examine his belongings at Scotland Yard. Yeah, we actually need to do that. <clears throat> so let's check, let's check out this woman and then we might go in Yard. Mrs. Powell? What do you want? Uh, my name is Sherlock Holmes. I'm assisting the police with their investigation of the crime that took place this evening. Well, I've already gave my testimony, but very well. Could you tell us everything that you may have seen or heard? Yes, yes. I was selling my flowers as usual, and then the fireworks began, in honour of Queen Victoria. I enjoyed those. But then, all of a sudden, a young lad ran out of Half Moon Street and stopped just by me. He had a gun in his hand. He was like a ghost and all covered in blood. It was dark, but I could see him because of the flashes from the fireworks. And then? I hmm. screamed as loud as I could. I knew that a policeman should be on duty in the vicinity. He had no time to escape. Two constables got him. Then another constable came out from the very same street and I heard him talking of a horrible murder. Okay. Mrs. Powell, did you hear the gunshots? I'm not sure. You know, what with the fireworks? Did you see anyone else leaving Half Moon Street prior to or at the time of the crime? No, sir. I did not. Even with all the fireworks, I was very attentive, as I'm always on the lookout for customers. <laughs> yeah, customers My at the time you, of the day. Mrs. Powell. Good luck with that. Well, I think that we did everything here. I'm gonna just make sure that I actually did everything. 
I'll do anything to save my brother, Mr. Holmes. I fairly. Okay, we can do anything with that. Can we actually talk with this? Come on. Wow, I'm so bugged sometimes. It would be my pleasure to. <clears throat> okay, we can't. So let's go there. Let's check belongings of our suspect, I guess. And let's interrogate him. <clears throat> This seems like a regular murder case, Mr. nothing Oates. really weird. Whatever brings you here so late at night? I'm interested in the case of young Leighton Chapman. He was arrested earlier this evening and accused of a double murder. I beg your pardon? That case is quite clear to the police. Or are there any new facts that we don't know about? <laughs> Who knows, Inspector? Look, you are free to investigate, of course, Mr. Holmes. Chapman was arrested with a revolver in his possession, which you can find in the evidence room. The suspect himself is in custody. Did you find anything else on his person? A few personal belongings. Nothing particular, Mr. Holmes. Thank you, Lestrade. <clears throat> okay, let's see. I already have some ideas, but I'm not gonna judge. Before I don't see anything. <clears throat> so this is the gun that Leighton was holding when he was caught by the police. It is a Webley revolver, a reliable weapon. And it seems as though the shells were not removed from the cylinder. Can we rotate this? Yes, we can. They're missing something. There we go. <clears throat> two out of the six shells have been fired. There were two shots. Yeah, we know that. But one was louder. A cheap watch. Bought with his own money, no doubt. These cigarettes are filled with cheap tobacco. Nothing interesting. Okay. Let's try to collect some evidence here. Um, two victims and that, which means that uh, Kenneth Butler and Brian Vercotti were the victims of a double murder carried out by one person. <clears throat> Still kind of worried about uh, that fact that one was uh, one was louder. The witness testimonies in the crime weapon clearly point at one possible culprit, Langton Chapman. Well, so far, yes. Uh, different shots uh, and not probably nothing. Turner could hear the contrast between two fire shots in a factory. Shots were made. As first single shot was fired and then two guns fired simultaneously directly afterwards. Or Turner could hear the contrast between two fire shots as they were made from different points. <clears throat> well, this is totally to judge. And I wouldn't say that there, there could be three of those. I don't know, maybe it's just me. Nah, we can't connect anything with that. I'm trying to find a way out from that boy. But I don't think that they can. So far at least. But that guy, that uh, soldier veteran, uh, he's kind of weird because he might be lying about something. Please escort this suspect for interrogation. He might be lying Good about evening, something. Good evening, Mr. Chapman. Who are you? I've got nothing to say. It's all a mistake. Calm down, Leighton. I have come here to help you. To find out if you truly are innocent, as your younger brother Wiggins has told me. My brother? You know him? Then that means you're... Sherlock Holmes. Oh, blimey. All right, Mr. Rhymes, I'll tell you everything. 
First thing first. Okay, that was kind of expected. We kind of knew that. Hot head. Office clerk. Huh. Then same tattoo. Good. Tell me your account of what happened. I left my work and I hurried up to see the fireworks in Whitechapel. I was late, so I decided to cut through off Moon Street. I saw the first fireworks light up in the sky. I bumped into a constable on a corner before entering Half Moon. Then suddenly, what with all the firework flare, I saw two men. They were both lying flat in the middle of the street. I stopped where I was. I, I thought about turning back to the police, but as I was thinking of that, I saw a third person. He was leaning over the body that was furthest from me. The second I saw him, he raised his head and he stared at me. In a flash, I saw his gun, but he made a dash for it instead and he escaped through Whitechapel Street. So he escaped from same street from where Constable came, right? So you might still have had time to return to the Constable. I panicked. I, I didn't know what to do. Anyway, I, I approached the bodies just to see if they were still alive. I saw that one had blood pumping out of his stomach. He was dying. It was horrible. The second one was already dead. He had a hole in his head. He was holding a gun in his hand, though. I took it. And then I followed the third man. Hmm. Interesting. Pray continue. Did you shot the third one? And I saw the man standing in the middle of the street. He seemed to be in some, some sort of panic. And then, Mr. Holmes, something strange happened. I told the police and they laughed at what I said, but I swear to you, my words are true. I started running towards him. But then I was blinded by a flash. It was so bright that I hardly saw anything for a good dozen seconds. But I kept running forward. As I arrived in Whitechapel, I heard a woman screaming. And then I was caught by the police. But there wasn't a trace of that man. Of course, then they found a gun and all that blood. I couldn't see the murderer escaping and all that mess. Perhaps I was still half blinded at that moment. A thrilling account, my young man. Yeah. Layton, are you able to describe the person whom you saw standing in Half Moon Street? Well, I wasn't able to see his face at all. It was too dark, and he was too far away. I could see his silhouette. Hmm. And what about that? Nothing so special. He, he was wearing a jacket. He was quite average in, in size and his weight. I see. Was there anything else that struck you at the time? No. But perhaps... It's strange, but... I can't remember the sound of his footsteps as he was running away. Perhaps it was because of the fireworks or, or the surprise of me seeing him. Hey, Alan, like some. Welcome to stream, man. Layton, I confess I am puzzled. <clears throat> Why should you, a young man you, like you uh, take a gun from the hands today? of a dead man and set off in pursuit of a probable killer? I know. I keep wondering that, but at the time it was it was like a reflex. A criminal ought to be arrested, and he was armed. You were willing to risk your life. That was a little foolish, unless. You wanted revenge? No, Mr. Rams. I was just being brave and stupid. Mm. I'm sure that you were, but I believe that you may have recognized one of the victims, Brian Vercotti. You knew that gentleman well, did you not? How? How ever could you know so that? So he's lying. You have a typical tattoo of the Westgate Brotherhood upon your hand. I observed exactly the same mark upon Mr. Vercotti. You came to know him from your sharing a past prison sentence. Am I correct, Mr. Chapman? Oh, God. You're right, Mr. Holmes. So we cannot believe in him anymore. At least not 100% as it ought.
Would you tell me a little about Brian Vercotti? We were convicted for a robbery. Once in prison, both of us joined one of these fraternities. During that year, we tried to help each other out, you know? Now, you were quite young then, I believe. Yes, Mr. Holmes, we were. We'd only stolen a pound of meat. After we were released and when I saw what my little brother had become, I decided to work towards living an honest life. And Vercotti? <coughs> he had a hard time. His sister had died in a Whitechapel dispensary while he was in prison. He had no family anymore. Our path split. He fell back into crime. So you lost him? Yes. And for around two years, I heard no news of him at all. We shall see you soon, young man. Hmm. He was lying, but again... Uh, that... Wait. Why that can't be connected and how that actually can be? Uh, the violent crime committed in Half Moon Street by Langton Chapman could have had a personal motive. Everything leads us now to the conclusion that he is the killer, although I don't believe in that still. Uh, talk to Mr. Turner and check the view from his flat. I could do that in fact, that should be the perfect, perfect thing to do right now. If he allows us to do that. But that bright light, I'm not really sure that he was talking about something. Wait, I don't think that we can. Actually, we can. Imaginary man. Uh, the person from Langton Chapman describes in his statements is a fragment of his own imagination created by Vindicate himself. Wait, wow, that's already like solved murder case. I don't want to go there still because I'm not sure that he's the murderer. That's kind of weird. What's up with you, lad? What are you waiting for? I'm waiting for my brother to be released. Your brother? The one that you <clears throat> caught, beat up and imprisoned. Ah, the murderer. He ain't killed no one, copper. Watch your mouth, lad, else you'll be joining that worthless brother of yours. Hmm. It would be my pleasure to assist you with your investigation, Mr. Holmes. This is first time that we can actually solve the murder case right now. But I still have obvious things to do, which is quite interesting. Uh, let's see, can, is he going to let us go upstairs? Mr. Turner, you have stated that you remained close by your window after the crime, is that correct? Oh, yes, Mr. Holmes. I stayed at my window until the policeman arrived to examine the dead bodies. He is lying. That is very interesting, Mr. Turner. Constable Marrow stated that he did not see anyone at the window when he was running through Half Moon Street. Oh, oh, well, I think Constable Marrow and me, we might have been distracted by the whistles and shouts coming from Whitechapel. We could have missed each other somehow. Do you understand what I mean? It was a bit of a stressful moment to tell you the truth, sir. Allow me to form my own theories, Mr. Turner. Would you mind showing me the view that you had from your window? Uh, not, not at all, Mr. Holmes. Please, follow me. I have a feeling that Mr. either Turner that police guy very modestly. or Mr. Turner actually did something which is related to this case. This fire is dying out. It was last tended to over an hour ago. Yeah, we're gonna find something here. Burnt paper. The papers are almost entirely burned. I am unable to see what's written here. Mm. 
Got to be something here. Because otherwise he would put that down, right? The paper. So I'm obviously missing something. Wait. Or maybe I'm not missing, I don't know. How do I think that we are missing something? Got to be something because it's still white. Maybe something. These words are illegible. The papers were thrown into the fire just a short while ago. So we need to find a way. Actually, we need to find why. Mr. Turner was roused from his bed by the sound of gunshots. Uh, by the way, I want to check out. Yeah, we need one more person, which might be the third suspect if he actually. The books on this shelf are in a mess. Very it looks say, as though yes. Mr. Turner was trying to find something in a hurry here a short while ago. Okay, now we see something. A perfect match. So, Mr. Turner broke his stick when it became stuck between the cobblestones. He did not mention that he was so near to the victims. Okay, there we go. Now I'm glad that I didn't conclude this case already. Because, as I said, either him, either that police guy are somehow related to this murder case. <clears throat> Wait, do I mean? Oh. There are pieces of shredded paper scattered over the table. This kitchen knife is quite sharp. This kitchen knife was used to cut the paper. Okay. Anything else you would like to know, Mr. Holmes? Well, I have a couple questions, but apparently I can't ask you now. So, that's the view Mr. Turner had when he opened the window. Well, actually quite good view. The dead body of Kenneth Butler. Brian Vercotti's contorted corpse. Mr. Turner had a perfect view of the crime scene. He saw the bodies clearly, and Leighton Chapman standing over them. But there is no way that I'm gonna believe in that. Anything else you would like to know, Mr. Holmes? Wow, and they really can't ask. Uh huh. Okay, there we go, I see. No, wait. This is weird. Okay, he did that, then he got his stick. I don't know, we're gonna try this way, but... He was down there as well. Uh, do we have something here perhaps? No. So he did stand up, he got his stick. No, he already had that stick there, right?
He got some paper, I guess. Then he got knife. It's probably completely relevant. Maybe he just wanted more fire, I guess. Then he went to the window. Or oh, we can fast forward, actually. And then he went all the way down to check this. No, it didn't happen this way. I don't think so neither. Oh well, this is gonna be one of those. I think... Got up from the bed. Placed the broken stick. Threw something... In no, yeah. Cut paper with knife. That is the second. Approach the body. Then he placed the broken stick. If he did something, he got knife. He threw that into fire, and then he opened the window. Yeah, that was kind of stuck there, I guess, for a second. Now for some reason he got that paper, he threw that into fire, and then he opened the window. No, it didn't happen this way. Wow, god damn it. I'm never going to realize this one. took something yeah he did took something okay he probably did that Took something, maybe. Then he went down there. Then he did that. That. And he opened the door. If that doesn't work, then... Then I don't know. Perhaps he did open the door, uh, the window before. To see what is happening down there. And then he decided to approach. No, it didn't happen this way. God damn Anything it. else you would like to know, Mr. Holmes? So we know that he's lying, but we can't find actually what we need. Maybe he just <clears throat> went to the window, he saw what's happening, he went down there. Then that into fire and left that there if this doesn't work I'm not really sure what I can do Come on, tell me that we got what we needed.
No, it didn't happen this way. Ah. Oh. So what the fuck? He wasn't in the bed in the first place. Let's go down there. Let's see, can we actually do something from here? Nope, it's only that. He definitely took something. If he took something, he used his knife to destroy that paper and he threw that at fire. So those three got to be connected. But maybe he got something from there. He doesn't wear glasses. Approach the body. Then that, that, and that. Wow, I I wish that we can skip just to the end and see is that right or wrong. I'm out of the no, options right it now. Didn't happen this way. I'm really freaking out of the options right now. So wait, let's try with completely honest, honest, however, mm -hmm. option. He stood up. He saw something down there. He took something. He. He went down there. Oh god damn it. That need to be number three. We took something. That down there is number f wait, why well, can't even use that as number four? That's number three. That's number four. That should be the number five. And that should be the number six. If this doesn't work, I have one more theory. But <clears throat> after that, I'm actually completely. I don't know. Stupid. <laughs> Sherlock Holmes. He definitely took something, and his piece of wood got stuck there. That's obvious. No, it didn't happen this way. But why would he... Okay, let's see. Maybe I'm missing something. Maybe I'm missing something here. Or maybe now we can use that object of interest. A fairly long pose. We can't, of course. I don't think that I'm gonna find something which I didn't already. <clears throat> I kind of feel stuck right now. I'll do anything to save my brother, Mr. Holmes. What about this window? The glass. Hmm. This mirror is turned. Such a young man, and already a murderer. Shut the fuck up, you don't even know what you're talking about. Nothing here, so what the hell? Cut papers with knife. What if he just did that, that, he heard it, he went down there, <clears throat> and he plays that. We didn't try out that one. 
Maybe he just wanted fire without, you know, anything weird, suspicious about that. No, it didn't happen. I'm really pissed off right now. Got to be starting with this one, right? He took something, perhaps. And then cut the papers. No. Why would he do that? He opened the window, he approached the body, he cut the papers. <coughs> this is more started way, but I guess let's see. Uh, we can conclude this case right now, but I don't want to do that. No, it didn't happen this way. Actually, since I'm kind of tired of this game, let's see. What actually happened there? Let's see what actually freaking happened there. Because this is ridiculous. We had option to skip on basically every kind of sort of this thingy puzzle. Now we can't. Oh god, people are not even playing after after they get stuck in this game. Amazing. Oh well. Uh, let's see, let's see. Nah, people didn't, people didn't even got to this point, I guess, or they didn't had success. <clears throat> so basically nobody don't know what the fuck is happening here. I guess. Yeah, people are playing like uh, number part 10 still on those stations when I dealt with those like way way much way too many parts ago or however what the fuck man I'm not sure which, which combo I didn't do We can see papers here, so those three need to be, or those two need to be related. And he needed that stick. Or he locked the window. Oh no, look down. He needed to look down to see what's happening. Then he might approach the body, but we did actually did that. We already did that. Maybe he did that. 
he went down there and then he plays the broken stick because I think that he plays the broken stick at the end <clears throat> He needed that stick when he was down there. That's obvious, right? No, it didn't happen this way. Oh, you fucker, I'm so mad right now. Okay, I'm gonna go with the most retarded way. He did that, he did that. He opened the window. He, I believe that I already did this, but whatever. God, this fair to God, this is the most most retarded thingy so far in this game. No, it didn't happen this way. How do you know what happened in that way, or it didn't? Can I change my? Yeah, we heard three shots. So fuck that. That's not gonna happen. So if you actually have that... We need to do again... This which doesn't seem so that we're gonna find anything here but whatsoever. <coughs> if game tells us to do something like that then examine the dead bodies and perform a re and argument. Well, I can't really do that while that old guy is here. I tried everything. Literally everything. She took the stick. And then what the fuck happened? Cut papers with knife. Threw something into fire. Threw papers into fire because we already know that. So logic. He opened the window, he saw something down there, he approached the body, he took something, he cut those papers with knife, he threw them into fire, and then he placed his broken stick there. Or maybe he placed the broken stick there, then he cut a paper sweet knife, and then he did that. Because he took something. Oh god, if, if this was the case, I'm gonna kill myself. Because obviously he didn't have a knife. And when he was placing that wood stick, he might got that knife there. Like here. Place that down there, he got the knife, then he did it. There so we go. Mr. Turner used a book to hide wow. an object that he found on Kenneth Butler's <clears throat> body. The question is, what did he find? Wow. 
It was obvious, but as I usually. I can see prints from greasy fingers upon the cover of this book. Let us take. Well, now, what a find! A precious jewel concealed inside a book. Hmm. A bracelet with a unique ram's head design. A distinctive feature of ancient Grecian artifacts, probably of the Hellenistic era. Please don't go in that direction with those ancient symbols and those kind of stuff. I'm tired of that since that bat murder case. Mr. Turner, how would it be possible for a man of advanced years, such as yourself, to rush from his bed to the window in a matter of seconds, as you have stated? Well, uh, I'm, I'm able to move very quickly, despite my age, and when the situation requires it, Mr. Holmes. Liar. Why? Because we have that bracelet. Nope. Well, uh, I'm, I'm able to move very quickly, despite my age, and when the situation requires it, Mr. Holmes. I guess nope. Uh, Dorky, Turner's uh, Westgate prisoners, Turner's limp. No, I and, highly uh, doubt that, Mr. Turner. I observe that you suffer a severe limp due to your injured right leg. It would have taken at least ten seconds for you to approach the window. That means you could have easily missed something or someone in Half Moon Street during that time. You're right, Mr. Holmes. I could have missed something. But it did seem to me that everything happened so quickly. Oh, time can pull tricks on you. And what of everything else that you told us? Mr. Turner, it is vital that we have your complete and true statement. Mr. Holmes, I do assure you that the other things I said were most sincere. Okay, now he's lying and now we're gonna go with this one. Mr. Turner, you were not sincere with me. Not then, and not now. But, 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 Mr. Holmes... This, Mr. Turner, does not look like anything that a poor man might possess. It is worth more than the home that you live in. I, I can explain. No, merely correct me if I am wrong. You saw Leighton Chapman through the window. But you also noticed a glittering object on the ground. This precious jewel. You walked down and took the bracelet from the body of Kenneth Butler. And when you heard the whistles, you hurried away. That broke your walking stick. It caught fast between the cobbles. Constable Marrow was unable to see you in the window as you were climbing up the stairs on your way back to your flat. Upon returning home, you hid the precious jewel inside a book. Mr. Holmes, please don't send me to prison. I didn't oh. do anything bad. I'm just a poor man. When I chanced upon the bracelet, I saw it as an opportunity to make a little money. I was desperate. I only took the bracelet, that's all I swear. You made a mistake by lying to me. But you are not a criminal. I believe that. Although I must return this bracelet to its rightful owner. Okay... So now we need to examine the dead bodies and then investigate the ancient bracelets and find out how it could have appeared at Half Moon Street. How the fuck I'm gonna do that? Do I go and analyze that? Search archives, okay, okay, okay. We can do that, but. Wait, if you shot it there, what the hell? I am unable to see any higher. I need to find something to lift my lamp. Oh, now we can use this, right? This hmm. should be useful. That's gonna be useful. But can I use my... Oh well, we can't use our vision, so now I need to deal with... There this we go. This is most definitely a bullet hole. 
The brick cracks are fresh. Watson, there was a third shot fired in this street. Nice. So now third shot and two victims. Kenneth Bartler and Brian Ricotti both died in crossfire with each of them holding a gun. One of the guns is now missing. Kenneth Bartler and Brian Ricotti were the victims of a double murder carried out by one person. I would say crossfire. Sorry, but I can't go other way around for now. Okay, we can actually do more of those. Uh, third shot and his statement. Langton Chapman's statement regarding the jacket's man who disappears in Scarlet Street now seems reasonable. As the three shots at the crime scene prove the presence of second gun that is now missing. Indeed, I agree with that. So now we have disappearing man. And the only thing which we can do is to do that and talk with him. Constable Marrow, I would value your assistance in this investigation. It would be my pleasure, Mr. Holmes. I would like to make sure that there are no places in Half Moon Street where a man could hide while you were running through it with your lamp. All right, Mr. Holmes, what should I do? Take your lamp and start walking, just as you did before, and try to find me. Understood. Okay, this is gonna be fun. Hide and seek, I guess. Oh, we're gonna go with from his perspective now. Okay.